to go ahead and grab your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 10, where we will be studying the first 21 verses of John's Gospel this morning, chapter 10. If you don't have a copy of God's Word with you today, we've got you covered. These gentlemen right here will bring you a copy. Just raise your hand and they'll bring you a copy of God's Word to you. If you don't have a copy of God's Word at home, please take it with you as our gift to you this morning. Also, they have copies of today's sermon uh, with them, and so if you want to follow along, uh, just raise your hand. They'll bring you a copy of today's sermon. It will also be on YouTube uh, later on today and uh, whatever. I'm not a social media uh, guru or whatever. It's, it's out there. Go look for it. Yeah, all right, but I'm glad you're here to hear it this morning. If you're a guest with us this morning at Beacon Hill Church, thank you for coming and being a part of our worship this morning. Uh, there's a couple of things I hope that you find out about us here at Beacon Hill Church. One, I hope that you are warmly welcome here when you came. I hope that you see the love of Christ and we're genuinely happy that you are here today. The second thing that I hope you see is that we take the Word of God seriously here. When you leave here today, I don't want you to say that the preacher was good. I want you to say that the Word was awesome. Thirdly, I want you to see that we want to make much of Jesus Christ here. We want to exalt the name of Jesus Christ in everything that we do. We want to learn more about Jesus. We want to be more like Jesus. And we want to be sent out to tell others about Jesus. As my mentor says, he said, It is the will of God to have the Spirit of God to use the Word of God to make the children of God look like the Son of God. Do you get me this morning? So I pray, it's all right to clap the church, by the way. If you, you can, if God is telling you something, you ain't a fall of me, you're a fall of the word of God. Amen? If you're able to, please stand now in honor of reading God's holy word this morning. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 21. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 21. The word of God says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This word will preach, y'all. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not in this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. There was again a division among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, He has a demon that is insane. Why listen to him? Others says, these are not the words of one who is oppressed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word speaks. Lord, it is active. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, I pray this morning that the word of God would pierce the hearts of the hearers this morning, that the Spirit would speak right through me this morning and penetrate the hearts of the hearers this morning. 
Lord, I believe you brought people in here today just to hear this specific word preached today. So, Lord, use me to preach your word with boldness, with clarity and conviction and allow the Holy Spirit to convict the people that are here today that need to hear this message, which is all of us. Lord, I pray that I would decrease and you would increase. And if there's somebody here today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of salvation for them. Lord, I thank you to be able to be here in Hopewell, Virginia this morning to preach your word. In Jesus' holy and Christian name, we praise you. Amen. You may be seated. I have entitled today's message, Strange Voices. Strange Voices. Jesus, when he spoke, he often used parables to point the hearers to his message. In John chapter 10, the word that we see being used here are words like sheep, sheepfold, and shepherd. These are words that are of Eastern significance that you would normally see sheep following a shepherd around town. This is not something that you would normally see in downtown Hopewell, Virginia. But I'm here today to tell you that this word is very much applicable to us here today in this town and around the world for the glory of God. I contend that this word can change the lives of many people that are here today. May the word speak this morning. I want you to see in the first two verses of this scripture is that not everyone in the church has your best interest in mind. Did you hear me? Not everyone in the church has your best interest in mind. Look what the first two verses says. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. You, you know the gathering of believers is meant to be a safe place. You know that? The gathering of the believers is meant to be a place where we can come and study about him, learn about him, look more like him, and be sent out to him. The gathering of believers is meant to be a place where the weary can come and get refreshed, where the hurting can come and be restored. The church is a place where people can come together before they are sent back out to live on mission to him. The church is meant to be a place of security, not a place for intruders. In this day, the sheepfold that's being talked about would likely either be a circular enclosure or a square enclosure that only had one entrance. In fact, it even had vines over the top. There was only one way in and there was only one way out. And once the sheep got in for the night, the, the watchman would lay down at the front gate so that the sheep could be protected, that they could have a place to let down their guard and relax for the night. It was only when the shepherd laid down at the gate did they feel comfortable to be themselves. They were free from the dangers. And I want you to know as watchmen of this flock, I do everything that I can to protect the sheep that God has given me. I, I care for each soul that God has given me to protect and proclaim the word of God to. I am not the shepherd. I am just the watchman for the shepherd. I am not perfect, but I want to tell you about the one who is perfect this morning. I, I don't want you to take what I say as the gospel. I want to point you to the word of God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ that can change your life. Look. I want you to see in reading the first verse of this gospel of John chapter 10 that there is a danger to the church today. There are strange voices in the church today. There are people who have entered the sheepfold that are acting like sheep, that look like sheep, but the word of God calls them thieves and robbers. How did they get into the sheepfold, pastor? There's only one way in and one way out. I'm glad you asked. Scripture says that they came in another way. That they, they climbed the walls to get in to the church. Do you know though, when, it, when it talks about this in Scripture, when it says there's only one way in and one way out, you do know what that's referencing, right? That there is only one way to heaven. Do you get that? By repenting of your sins and trusting in Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You may try to get another way in, but there is only one way. Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. 
no one goes to heaven except through him. Yet, that doesn't stop people trying to make their own way. There are people in the sheepfold that have made their way into the church, who have infiltrated the church. Don't worry about them. They don't worry about them because you know what? Jesus will separate them in the end. You may look like a sheep, but I got to tell you, Jesus knows who are his sheep and who are acting like the sheep. That doesn't mean that they are not a clear and present danger to the church today. When scripture says that they have climbed the walls into the church and infiltrated the church, this is the reason that I implore you, I exhort you to take the word of God seriously so you can know the truth from what is false. There are people who have their own interest in mind and not those that are in Christ Jesus. You might ask, Pastor, how do we know who are the real sheep from the false sheep? And I wish I could tell you every list so you can have a check mark. It's not that easy, but I will tell you a couple of reasons why you can find the prosperity preacher who will only share you part of the gospel and not the false, the whole full gospel. They are a thief. They are a robber. The one who tells you that you can get to heaven by your works. They are a thief and they are a robber. The ones who is more concerned about what people think than what God knows. The ones who tell you that I believe this about the Bible, but I don't believe this about the Bible. You do know you can't just take parts of the Bible. you got to take it all because it is all the inspired and found and inerrant word of God. The ones who tell you, go ahead and you're excited. Give the Lord some praise this morning. They use all the terms in the Bible. But don't believe that Bible is the inspired and found and inerrant word of God. The Bible calls those people thieves. The Bible calls those people robbers. And yet, we're, we're taking off the power about this. I wish I could give you this, this whole <coughs> checklist of what the devil uses. But you know the devil is crafty? The devil will do whatever he can. He will describe, he will dress up people that look almost, and they say almost the, the things that you are having a hard time to discern what is the truth and what is not the truth. You know why? Because the devil wants to be king. But I have news for the devil. That title is reserved for one person only, and his name is Jesus Christ. Can you get me this morning? He is the good shepherd. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is Jesus Christ. He created the church. He died for the church. And he is coming back for the church. He is the good shepherd this morning, church. Are you here with me? There are people in the church that do not have your best interest in mind. And so I want you to see, as we dig into this scripture, just for protection of the sheep, that the shepherd knows his sheep. And catch me, the sheep know their shepherd. Look with me in verses 3 through 6. When we read the passage of verses 3 through 6, we are, are just struck by the intimacy that the shepherd has for his sheep. How much he loves his sheep. While the sheep are in the sheepfold, there is only one person that can come in while the watchman is laying down. And his name is Jesus Christ. Do you know that Jesus has full access to this church as watchman over the flock that God has given me? You may not know this, but I want you to know this morning that I will be held accountable for how I have cared for the souls that he has given me. One day, I will stand before a holy and righteous God, and he will say, what have you done with my sheep? I take that role as watchman of this flock very seriously. I won't let people come up and preach in this pulpit other than the people that I feel are God-inspired and want to make much of Jesus Christ. I won't let people come and lead communion groups unless I know it and I'm holding them accountable so that they care about what they're doing to make much of Jesus Christ. Jesus is not a distant God. He is a God who is intimately involved in the affairs of his church. Can you get me this morning? Look what it says in Scripture. We see the intimacy that he has. The sheep hear his voice. The sheep hear his voice. The sheep can discern the truth from what is false because the sheep know his voice. I've had people tell me before, 
Pastor, I wish I could hear God speak. And my answer to them and to you today, if you want to hear God speak, read your Bible. If you want to hear Him speak out loud, read your Bible out loud. Because when you read the Bible, He has given you 66 books where He is speaking out loud. Do you get me this morning? Do you know when the Word speaks? Secondly, He knows you by name. Satan could care less about who you are. He could care less about how he destroys the church. He doesn't care about you. But yet, Jesus knows you by name. He knows every hair on your head. He knows every thought in your mind. He knows what you're hurting about. He knows what you need help with. Don't you love that we have a God who is intimately involved and cares about each and every person in this world? Don't you love that this morning? He knows you by name. But this is how intimate it is. He, he takes what is his and leaves the rest for Satan. Look, you imagine when he says you can come in and come out. When he is sitting there calling his sheep by name, he is over there like going, uh, you can come with me. Kim, you come with me. Uh, here we go. Katie, you come over this way. Uh, hold up. You might want to stand over there for a second. I'll get you in a minute, son. All right? Uh, well, but that's my best friend. I don't care who your best friend is. You won't go over there because I can only let them right here. Do you get what I'm saying here? He knows you by name. He knows who is his sheep, and he knows who are the false sheep. And he believes. He believes you. Did you get that? He, he leads you through troubled borders. He leads you in the path of righteousness. God doesn't just point the way. He shows you the way. If you guys want to know the will of God for your life, I can got news for you this morning. If the Bible says it, it's okay. If it doesn't say it, it's not okay. It's not that hard to figure out what is permissible and what is not permissible. For parents in here today of children, I heard a great teacher this, this week on Caleb who said it like this. If you are not following God's will for your life, you are pointing your children in the opposite direction that they need to be going. Because what you permit, you promote. Do you get me this morning? If you permit uh, uh, things that are not of Christ, you're promoting that to your children this morning. Don't leave your kids in the path of unrighteousness. Lead them where God is taking you. I want you to see the stupidity of it all this morning. The stupidity of it all. I'm just going to be real honest with you here in Scripture. If, if we use this parable about sheep, it, I don't know if you know much about sheep, but sheep are not the brightest of animals that God created. In fact, sheep are stupid. That's just a matter of it. And some of you might say this morning, Pastor, are you calling me stupid? No, I'm not. The Word of God is. So listen who's telling you this, all right? The thing about thieves and robbers, that is false teachers that are not the sheep. They, they know just about, enough about the truth to lead the sheep astray. And you know what most sheep here in America do? They graze on whatever's being fed to them. Do you get me? They, they, may, they may genuinely have a desire to follow Jesus Christ. You're here today because you want a relationship with Jesus Christ. And most people in the churches today, are gonna, they're going to take everything that is said to them and they're going to believe everything that's said to them. Yet the Bereans took what was shared with them and matched it up against Scripture. That's why I want you to have your Bibles open and everything that I say today. And better be lined up with what Scripture is. Do you hear what I'm saying? But yet there's some people, when you start grazing, you know what happens? When you start grazing on what's being fed, sheep has a, has a habit just to keep on grazing. And they just keep on grazing. And they don't even notice when the grass turns from green to, to light green to brown. And when they have problems in their life, when they come up against things in their life that they can't handle, they look up and they are so far away from God, they can't even see the shepherd anymore. Do you know what I'm saying this morning? There's so many people that I believe started off desiring to have this great relationship with Christ. And yet they have found themselves so far away following false teachers, following prosperity gospel. Listen to me this morning. You need to know the voice of the shepherd. You need to be able to discern truth from what is false. You know how you can... Who's ever watched the movie Catch Me If You Can? Has anybody watch that movie? I've watched it probably more than any movie I ever had. It's one of these great... It's a true story. You know how they can tell a, a fake $100 bill 
from a real $100 bill is that they examine that which is real, that way they can tell what is fake. When you examine the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you study the word of God, you are able to discern what is being preached is truth and what is being told to you that is false. Do you get me? So the third one this morning. I want you to know why you should follow the shepherd. Why you should follow the shepherd, verses 7 through 14 says this. One, he's the only way, church. That's why you should follow the shepherd. There is no other way through the gate except through Jesus Christ. There are so many different religions. There are so many different denominations. There are so many things that are being said in the world today. But the truth remains that there is only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. That is important. That's why we, we are not a denominational church here. I, I, not that denominations are bad, but I want you to know, I don't want us to get caught up in religion. I want us to get caught up on Jesus Christ. I saw a church passing through Glen Allen. David Huff, if you're here, it's right past where you work, man. Uh, it's a universalist, Unitarian church. I was like, what does that mean? I had to look that up, man. That's like, that's a lot of words right there in the church. And I looked it up. It's a church for all people. You go to heaven. You go to heaven. You go to heaven. Atheist preaching one week, a Jewish person preaching the next week, a supposedly Christian, then you have a, literally, I mean, you want to talk about confusing? Yet this is what the world is promoting today. Yet the truth remains that there is only one way. His name is Jesus Christ. You should follow Jesus because he is the one that provides salvation. It's not that you might be saved or you hope to be saved. It is when you confess Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, you are saved. Jesus provides salvation. Secondly, Jesus provides peace. We just started celebrating recovery on Wednesday night because there are a lot of people that are struggling with very different things from, from anxiety to stress to drugs, separate addictions, hurts. You know what? We all have something, and we all have this, this lack of peace in our lives. Are you feeling me this morning? Did some of you this, this morning here, and you just don't feel that peace that you want? Jesus offered that peace that you need. It says that in Scripture, it says in Philippians, the peace that transcends all understanding. He provides salvation. He provides peace. But thirdly, He also provides abundant life. And yet, don't get me uh, started on, on this, this path where I can preach a whole sermon. There are churches that, that are called abundant this, abundant that. And they're talking about what you can, all this money stuff that you can have in your life. Do you know abundant life is not about money? It's about what your purpose is in life. When you know your purpose, when you know your mission, that is a life full of abundance. Do you with me this morning? You may be rich. You, you may be driving a Maserati. I doubt so in this congregation, but maybe you are. But if you want to have an abundant life, know what God's will is for your life and just run after it from your heart. That's what Jesus offers this morning. He offers salvation. He offers peace. He offers abundant life. You should follow him because he offers salvation. You should follow him because he offers peace. You should follow him because he offers abundant life. But secondly, you should follow him because he is the good shepherd. I want you to know that I love each and every single one of you here today. If I just met you, I, 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 I love you. I, I want you to know Jesus Christ. I desire you to have this relationship with Jesus Christ. I, I am the watchman of the church. I'll lay down, I'll do whatever I can to point you to Jesus. But there is no greater love that you will ever find than Jesus Christ. Well, I will protect you. I don't think that I love you enough to lay down my life for you. But there is one. There is one this morning who would lay down his life for you. In fact, he not only would, he did lay down his life for you. He came down from heaven. He gave me the Lord of church. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life, the life that we could not live. He died the death that we deserve to die. All the sins of the world were taken on him on Calvary. He was pierced for our transgression. When you leave here today, just read Isaiah 53. You will just get a picture of how great our God is. They killed him. 
they put them on the tomb and they thought the story of Jesus was dead until the third day when they came back and he was gone. They said, where is he? He is risen. He has conquered the grave and he raised it for us. He's the good shepherd. This last part that I want to share with you is important to those here today that know the good shepherd. This is the most important thing I can share with you in the scripture. If you know Jesus Christ, the glory of your life, I want you to see verses 16 through 21. And I'll just read the first part because I have other sheep that are not of this fold. See, this is the same message of the church. Do you get this? A church is not to be judged by its seating capacity. A church is to be judged by its sending capacity. There are other sheep that are out of these walls that do not know Jesus Christ, but he is saying they are my sheep, and he's telling the church, go out there and get them. Because they are my sheep. Bring them into the sheepfold. Tell them about me. That's one of the reasons we uh, desire our community groups and here's our grassroots effort to try to reach people one by one to, to, to deepen them in the word and then send them out on mission for God. We have community groups three days a week. If you are not part of one, I encourage you to be a part of one so you can be a part of what we're doing here at the church to reach the city. Do you want that? Do you desire that? You know, one of the things that we're going to be studying here in a few months in John chapter 14 is right before Jesus Christ went to the cross, right before he would give his life, he prayed for you. Do you know that? Just read the scripture. He prayed for you. He prayed for those who would come to know his name. Isn't it the most humbling thing when, when, when most of us would have the most selfish thing in our lives, he did the most unselfish thing. He prayed for you and I. That is so humbling. As I close here today, I want you to know three takeaways from the Scripture. I want you to see just three takeaways from the Scripture. In, in, in verse 16 to 21, he's talking about this. He, he talks about the church being one. Do you know that you go to this town, we see so many churches in this town. We see so many churches in America. Matter of fact, living in the South, there are so many churches to choose from. Yet, what the Word is saying here that we need to understand today is that there are not many churches. There is one church. It's not a black church. It's not a white church. One day, Revelation, we will all be together. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every culture will be gathered together. And we will be worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We won't be separated. It won't be about segregation. We will all be together. And may that be here today that we look like the church to come. Hallelujah. Secondly, with the proclamation of the gospel comes the mission. Not everyone is going to like or believe what you say, but that should not prohibit you from proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says in the word that the proclamation of the gospel will divide people. And lastly, as I leave here this morning, as I prepare for invitation, what scripture tells us is that Jesus is the chief shepherd. He is the good shepherd. But the question I have for you this morning, is he your shepherd? Is he your shepherd this morning? If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, maybe you sit here today and you're in church and you've been here for a few weeks and you're like feeling something and you're not sure if it's indigestion or what, let me tell you, it might just be the Holy Spirit grabbing a hold of your life telling you today is the day that you need to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. I pray you would have the boldness to come forth at this time. Pray. Maybe you just need prayer for something. Maybe, maybe the devil has been messing with you. The devil has been trying to take you. I just pray that you would allow us to intercede with you today. We believe in the power of prayer here. You know that the Bible says, Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer. My house should be a house of prayer. So I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask you to respond to the word of God this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for who you are. I thank you for being a God who saves. I thank you for being a God who loves us, who chases after us, who desires to have a relationship with us. Lord, you are the good shepherd. You are the good shepherd. You love us. Lord, I pray this morning that if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, today will be the day of salvation for them, that they will turn their life over to you. Lord, there's so many people here today that I know some of their stories, but I don't know everything that's going on in their lives. There's people here today that I haven't even met yet, but I imagine they've got some struggles going on in their lives. Lord, we don't need to know 
what people are going through, but we need to lay it down at the altar and just trust you to take care of it. Or we need to stop playing games. We need to stop playing around, and we need to start seeking you with all of our heart. And so, Lord, I pray this morning, this time of invitation, that you are speaking through the hearts of the hearers this morning. Your word is so powerful. It gives us so much truth. So maybe there's someone here today that thought they could get saved based on doing good things. They're trying to earn their way to heaven. Somebody told them that, that everyone was going to heaven. Or maybe